At FXTM, we take the time to focus on you so that you'll have time and money to spend on what matters to you most. Time is money. Invest it wisely. You write in the book, there is no faith and no courage and no sacrifice in doing what is expedient. What do you say to those viewers that don't pursue their dreams and are locked in their careers because they are too afraid to take risks and pursue something mm -hmm. meaningful? Well, the first thing I would say is, well, you should be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful. But you should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable. You're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. You might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like, don't be so sure of that. The clock is ticking. Yeah, and if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing in five years, you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. But isn't so, it a luxury to pursue what is meaningful? Our viewers have mortgages, they have children, yeah. they have payments and loans. It's well, a luxury to pursue because we, we lack the resources. Well, I don't think, I don't remember now, I'm not talking about what makes you happy. It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have a family and, 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 and children and, and a mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? Well, I have to look for another job. Well, no one wants to hire me. It's like, okay, maybe you need to educate yourself more. Maybe you need to update your, your curriculum vitae, your resume. Maybe you need to overcome your fear of being interviewed. Maybe you need to sharpen your social skills. Like, you, you have to think about these things strategically. If you're going to switch careers, you have to do it like an intelligent, responsible person. That might take you a couple of years of, of, of effort to do properly. We're built for struggle, us human beings. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge, and the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure, you want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. And so you lay out your destiny in the world, and you take the slings and arrows of fate. And you make yourself stronger while you're doing so. And you might fail, and fortune might do you in but it's your best bet. And you know, people have, had, have extracted unbelievable successes out of catastrophic failures. And so, and I'm not saying that in a naive way. I know perfectly well what happens to people, you know. You're doing fine in life and then you get cancer and then six months later you're dead. And all the heroism in the world isn't going to save you at that point. But that's not the point. That's not the point. Life is bounded by mortality. But that doesn't mean that you don't get out there and contend and you develop by contending and you minimize the net amount of suffering in the world. And that's something, man, that's something to do. Welcome to Bull Market Talk Show. Uh, this is Trian Hobson, and we're doing actually the the battling um, oil refineries in South Africa. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the story, but I got this um, article um, yesterday, and um, hey, it was actually a shocking article. And then I did some some reading on it, and it is actually it is true um, that um, all South African refineries are actually under review. Now this came. Um, as there was a lot of um, blasting and um, a lot of mistakes that was done in the refineries and, and poor maintenance of these refineries. 
Um, but that is the tip of the iceberg. Like, I mean, the, the maintenance of it. So I was like, why didn't these guys look after this? Um, 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 I mean, oil refinery. And um, I mean, it, you, you would normally think that oil refineries would make a lot of money. And, um, and obviously, the, the companies would look after this. So I will take about 20 minutes of your time today and then talk about the industry in South Africa. And obviously, you are also thinking about the, if the guys are not maintaining the thing, how can you put a picture of, of Joe Biden on? The problem is, is now that this whole thing is getting momentum now since the, the Biden administration. The, the problem is of the refineries. Um, these guys stop making investments into um, into these refineries. And now we have about in South Africa, we have about six. Um, one is in Cape Town, which is shut. Um, it's totally shut. Um, and then we have the engine refinery, which is also closed. So half of these refineries have already been shut, and the others are under review. We have the Sasso refinery, and then we have the Mossel Bay one, which is Petro SA which is actually uh, a, a big cornerstone. These industries are, are, are massive um, carriers of communities. And they create jobs. They put kids to school. They let the economy, they, they keep actually the economy alive. Um, and then you have the net, net refinery. Um, so we have six. So it's Cape Town Engine, um, SEP, SEP Refinery, Sasso Net Refinery, and then we have Mossel Bay. Um, which is now the Petro SA one. And um, I know of the area of Mossel Bay, which is a very small community. And um, obviously these jobs are actually of, of importance because basically Petro SA is holding actually Mossel Bay alive. And um, now these <laughs> refineries is actually under review. Now, according to what I discovered, is that we pay actually a carbon tax in South Africa, which is about 9 to 10 cents. That is now statistics of 2017. Um, to carbon tax for the government the, 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 to tax us now if we throw fuel in. Um, so there's a tax there of 9 cents. And this money is supposed to be used um, to actually to build infrastructure in a way of a greener South Africa. Now also these companies were supposed to actually to develop um, um, or transform their refineries for, gl uh, for cleaner fuel, and which they did not, and that's why they are under review. And obviously, these guys didn't make investments either. Now, I was thinking like, but, I mean, surely maybe a couple of few billions, then you will get your money back maybe in the next 10 years or something. Now, because of the uncertainty of the Green Deal, because the world is moving now away from your dirt um, fuels uh, or your 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 dirt uh, minerals, they're moving away from it um, now because obviously the echoes are now stronger of this um, green deal since Joe Biden signed um, the executive order to push the green deal in. So that's why these guys did not make any investments because South Africa also signed this Paris Accord deal in 2015, and with that said. Trump came in and said, listen here, this is a bunch of nonsense. And um, he cut out. So there was uncertainty. Will this Paris Accord deal ever continue? Because Trump left the Paris Accord. But So the guys actually did some um, reinvestment in Mossel Bay. Um, they discovered gas again. They looked for gas. They also, um, there was some, uh, I think it was Total, that actually discovered um, 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 some oil, a lot of oil actually. Um, and uh, gas, uh, that's the thing, and that could have made about, I think, about a billion barrels uh, of oil that was worth there. And then we had the fracking industry in South Africa that totally disappeared. It was in 2019 where they just shut the whole thing down for the Karoo, which was also being protested um, by the, the green people, th th these nutcases, I would say. So, which means... South Africa, the guys that are working now there at the refinery, South Africa stand at the risk of losing 750,000 jobs if all refineries are closing. Now, will these guys reinvest? The answer is no, because the world is moving away from it. Now, it sounds easy just to say shut it down because there was no maintenance and these guys see no value of reinvesting in these industries because... The world is moving to a greener, cleaner energy. And obviously the cars as well has an omission 
um, protocol that they need to pass. So obviously South Africa can't anymore produce these, uh, uh, the normal fuel that we are currently using because we need to keep at bay with the rest of the world. Now that put enormous amount of pressure on South Africa and that's why these guys are not investing because South Africa signed the stupid deal of the Paris Accord. A third world country wants to do stuff of a first world country. Insane. And now that Joe Biden is in charge, the whole thing took momentum. Now you want to tell me, these engineers, the people that work at the rigs, the guys that are semi-skilled and unskilled in these oil industries, where on earth? These guys are build actually a career there. This is not a job at, at checkers or if you actually come out of high school, then you can work as a waiter trying to find your way in life. These guys were working there for a very long time. That is all that they know. They build their career in there. They fed their kids. They send their kids to school. They, they hold their family together. This is not a job that you can just switch. Or even in South Africa, we can't afford 750,000 jobs to be lost where the unemployment is already close to 50% in this country. We have the obviously the, the restrict version of unemployment, which is about 30%. But if you add the people that totally gave up for jobs, it's definitely about 50%. That number is still in limbo because they don't count them. But the problem in South Africa is that we want to do stuff that will literally cripple this economy. This is the tip of the iceberg of the oil refineries that are closing. What about the mines that push up this dirty coal? Sooner or later, that will also shut down because of this green deal nonsense that we are signing in 2015. Everybody is happy that the, the country will go clean and all of those things. It will put people in poverty, as simple as that, 750,000 people, and this is direct and indirect jobs, skilled, semi-skilled, and low-skilled jobs will be totally gone if these oil refineries are closing, and please, this is not a myth or a conspiracy theory, you can go look, the, the most of them that are shut, already shut is half of them, they're already planning of keeping them for storage facilities because we will be reliant on importing oil from outside of the country. The, uh, they already shut. I doubt they will actually reopen because it doesn't make sense, economic sense for them to reopen because they need to upgrade their refinery, which will cost them millions of rands. So what is the use of, of upgrading it? Just close it down. And the others, they need to get upgraded. Where the hell will they get the money from? And if they upgrade, upgrade the, 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 the story, will they make their return on investment? Because oil prices will fall. As the world is now moving away from oil, this thing will backfire tremendously. And, and, and at least Trump was throwing water over the fire because there was uncertainty regarding the oil refineries. Now, all of a sudden, these things are all under review. Because they will get closed, of course. Because they're still producing the dirt. South Africa still needs a lot of dirt to create these jobs, to take people out of poverty. Then you can talk about a green nonsense. Where the hell do you think people, a person that is in poverty, or is looking for bread, or just to put food on his table, going to worry about throwing plastics in a different bin? I mean, what nonsense is this? Joe Biden is not even here, but he's already rattling South Africa. I mean, 750,000 jobs. I don't know why so many South Africans were praising this moron. Because now we're having, uh, people have to stress for themselves. 750,000 people that need to stress where the hell will they find a work. Because if they can't find a job here in South Africa because of signing of the of the Green Deal nonsense, where the hell will they find work outside of South Africa? Because they want to shut down all of these oil refineries. It is totally ludicrous. A whole entire industry dead. All those careers, all those money that were paid to uplift and upskill yourself, gone. Your house, your mortgages, your kids, everything gone. 
just for someone that can sign on a pen. And I also, besides Joe Biden, is the South African government. You know what? These fucking cunts, they can't even think for them fucking selves. They follow every fucking thing of what is being done on the outside world. They don't think about the impacts of what they of, of what they're signing. I doubt these fucking idiots actually understand what they are fucking signing. We all think, oh, we're going to be green, green, green. What the fuck? People are losing their jobs. Or people will lose their jobs because these plants will not open up in 2022 and 2023. They will stay fucking closed. And now ordinary men and women that just want to go to do, do their work and spend time with their families that have fuck all to do with politics, they are getting affected because these dumb cunts can just sign things there. They fucking have no clue of what they are signing. In fact, the fucking stupid uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Democrats or part of them that voted for, 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 um, for Joe Biden had no fucking clue of what they are fucking doing. No clue. Look, yesterday was also the story of the abortions that this stupid bastard Joe Biden is pushing also through. And, 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 and the thing is, I just knew that there would be a spillover to South Africa. I just knew. All the shit that that, that that sick Democrat party is doing is just spilling over here. Because these fuckers can't think for them fucking selves. They think their emotions are fucking their brains. There's a fucking difference. Think with your heart. What fucking shit is that? You need to fucking use your brain. That is what it, it's there for. To fucking think, not your fucking heart. Your heart is there to fucking pump blood out. Look now, 750,000 people. 750,000 people will definitely not get the jobs by 2022, 2023, where it's much cheaper for them to import the oil. The whole entire fucking industry gone. Gone. I honestly don't know anymore. It will be devastating, definitely. There will be a lot of misery of this stupid fucking green deal cuck. And you know what? I don't know why we're fucking paying nine, nine cents at the pump. I honestly don't know. Because we all know that these crazy politicians are just fucking eating it. They don't even know why people are fucking paying for it. They put it, everything in one pool and just fucking waste it. They don't, you know what, there's a lot of waste pickers in South Africa that pick up plastic and those stuff. They could have uh, rather give the money to them. But of course, they, uh, that money is just for them to pay their salaries out and to have some sort of fucking a green scheme again so that they can fucking steal that money as well. It's getting absolutely ridiculous. Seven, just a, nearly a million people will be out of work. Their careers totally gone, gone. I'm sure they're gonna, we're gonna put solo geezers on now. They need to start from the bottom because they don't have those skills. They don't have it. They have to start at the bottom. These guys have bonds to play, pay. These guys have medical aids, kids to raise. It is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But I just knew. But for, for, for some people, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, what is done in America will not affect anybody in the world. America is the strongest economy in the world. And whatever they do will affect us. At least what Trump did, he, he threw totally water over this whole situation. And there was uncertainty regarding this Green Deal. They needed to remove him so that they can fuck up the world again. It's absolutely insane what is going on. Absolutely insane. But in South Africa, I honestly, as the, the, the one um, uh, uh, um, uh, analyst was saying about the energy uh, in South Africa, they don't think that it will ever come back because these guys are not willing to invest. I doubt the, the South African government who owns uh, Petro Essay will actually reinvest because they are fucking broke, totally broke because of the collapse of the oil prices and the looting that is going on there. So you can kiss that whole entire industry goodbye.
I'm feeling sorry for these men and women. High paid jobs. Absolutely gone. It is actually sick what is going on. Absolutely sick and barbaric. But anyway, you fucking cunts voted for Joe Biden. So maybe some of you fucking deserve it. That's it from my side for today. I will see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye. The champ is here!